Hello there. In this video, I want to talk about graph attention networks. This paper is published in 4 February 2018, and it brings a new way for embedding information in a graph. So the paper starts with these phrases that we present graph attention network, GAT, novel neural network architectures that operate on graph structured data leveraging mass self-attention layers to address the shortcoming of prior method based on graph convolution or their approximations. By stacking layers in which nodes are able to attend over the neighbors feature, we enable specifying different weights to different nodes in a neighborhood without requiring any kind of costly matrix operation or depending on knowing the graph structure upfront. So basically if we see this figure, figure one, uh, it can be really helpful. So we had another video about convolutional graph neural network. And you remember that what is important in a graph is that what knowledge can be transferred from neighbor nodes to a, to a specific node. And, and when we want to extract an embedding information for this node, how we can do message passing or um, let us say we want to extract some latent features for these nodes. So uh, basically using the attention or maybe convolutional graph neural network, all of these methods are trying to represent this node as a latent feature H. So if you want to have like a node classification or a graph classification or edge detection or stuff like that, the thing is we try to predict this latent representation and can behave this latent representation as a vector and do uh, the classification or other downstream task on it. So let me explain it somehow better. So if you have a graph like this, let's suppose this is a paper, we have extracted some words from it and we uh, tokenize and create an embedding for those words, for those keywords. And now we have H2 for for this paper as a representation of that paper. And we know that this paper cites another paper and we have extracted the embedding for that paper too. So we will create a, a raw, I can say a raw graph. And after that, we wanna use this information that this paper cite this one and this one cite this one to update all of the embedding. So that's why I call it raw embedding. And after that, I call it the updated embedding. And the updated embedding is important because it has uh, the information about the connection inside it. After updating the whole graph, you can have a vector like H1 to H number of nodes. And this could be like a N by, that depends on the latent variable, like the D dimension that can be a vector like this. And we can do any um, downstream task on it. So we don't, we don't care about the age because the information of the age is updated through these uh, latent information. But how this can work? So the formulation of the graph attention network is defined here. They said, suppose the input to our large set of nodes. So we have some nodes, as I said, we have some embedding if they are like papers, if there are any other features that we have. And N is the number of nodes, and F is the number of features in each node. I suppose D in the uh, explanation I had here. And the layer produces a new set of nodes feature. So after updating, we want to create a new updated set of features as the output. So in order to obtain the sufficient expressive power to transform the input features into higher level features, at least one learnable linear transformation is required. So they say, uh, so we want to convert this H to this H prime. So at least we need the one level of transformation. So how this level of transformation can be defined. So suppose that the attention is A and we want to apply an attention on a weight multiplied by the node I. Let me show you an example. So for example, we have I, we have J and we have K. So uh, if you wanna calculate the uh, information between these two nodes, 
suppose they are connected to each other. So we say a weight multiplied by the HI, the embedding in the I, and the weight multiplied by the embedding of the J should pass through an attention. It said that indicates the importance of node J feature to node I. And they, they also said we only compute EIJ for nodes where NI is some neighborhood of node I in the graph. So if there is no connection, we cannot calculate EIK. We, they use, they call it mask attention. And uh, after calculating, suppose that we have another node here. So after calculating the, for example, EIJ and EI, and this is like P, so after calculating EIJ and EIP, so if you want to normalize the uh, importance of node, for example, J on node I, so we should consider the importance of node P on node I and normalize it, normalize the uh, EIJ, this importancy, based on uh, the weights that it can get from the na another neighbor. That's why we have the softmax here. We find which neighbors we have in the graph. And for those neighbors, we calculate EIJ. And based on that, we calculate alpha IJ. Alpha IJ is the softmax of the um, attentions between nodes. After that, they mention attention can be a single layer fit forward neural network. If it is a single layer fit forward neural network, so that can be defined like this. So this is a uh, single fit forward layer, WHI and WHJ. And the activation function is leaky rectified linear unit. And alpha IJ can be defined like this. For example, for uh, node one here for H1, we calculate alpha one to alpha one three, alpha one four and others. And after calculating all Based on this formulation, what we want to do is uh, we have this and we have the current representation. So we have another feed forward layer. And finally, we are um, sum over the different nodes. And after that, we have another activation function. They mentioned we can have multi head, uh, like the attention mechanism that we had in the attention is all you need. So instead of having just one, we can calculate it based on different heads. So it means that we can do this like K times. Each time we can calculate different attention because we are changing this W here and um, we can call it a new head. And finally we can combine them uh, like using the concatenation, maybe in any other approach that we can combine the heads. So as I said, uh, Instead of just concatenation, we can do some like averaging, the pooling, stuff like that. And um, they, they said also usually softmax or logistic sigmoid for classification problem can also be applied on top of that. So that's it. So if you see the result, they compare it with the other papers like the graph convolution on neural network and even with some of the advanced technique like graph, graph sage based on LSTM and they achieved very good result. Okay, let's start the coding. For coding, I think the DGL library is good to start instead of uh, reinventing the wheel. I wanna walk through the example of DGL and how, that, how does that work. And the DGL is the deep graph library. And you can see that um, it can work with Torch, the MXNet, TensorFlow. The DGL has some structure for the graph. So the the data set that should be in the graph structure that defined in DGL. And uh, after that, we, we need to pass it through some layers. Uh, if you see the examples folder here, you will see lots of graph neural network implementation. For example, the capsule graph neural network, the GAT that we have, I found it here. So this is the graph attention network that we uh, talked about that the paper is same. And uh, you can see that there is a GAT and the, there is a training part. I moved this code and I have created some unit tests. My version of DGL was not uh, up to date. That's why I just copy and paste the GAT convolution layer. So I just get this from the repository and I put that here. And finally in the test, I have test GAT 
I load the Quora graph data set. And using that data set, we get the features, the labels, it has the training validation and test mask. And we create a graph attention network, create the model based on cross entropy loss. We want to do the node classification. So we will define the learning rate based on the Adam optimizer. And we have accuracy function, the evaluate function, and the main loop for the tour. But what is inside the GAT? So the GAT or graph attention network is getting a G, which is a graph, the number of layers that we want for that uh, GAT, the dimension input, the number of hidden uh, layers, number of classes that we want to classify nodes based on that, number of heads that we have, the activation layer. Uh, we can have the drop out on the input features and also on the attention. And that negative slope is the slope of the ReLU function. What's going on here is based on number of layers that we have, we define different GAT convolution. GAT convolution is defined in the DGL library and implement what we discussed in the paper. And after that, in the forward function, when we get the inputs, we apply the GAT layers, the uh, graph attention networks. And for each of the layers, we flatten them. We call them hidden representation, the H that he had in the paper. And finally, an out, out layer is the classification layer which is again uh, GAT, it can be any other uh, layers, but because we wanna have a full attention, graph attention network, the last layer is also used by GAT and we get the average of the different heads that it has and we get the logits. So that's it, this is very simple. So if I run this test, so it will load the data, um, load the model, and it's start training. So you see the training accuracy now it's getting 99 and the test accuracy, the validation accuracy is getting 76. I hope that the test accuracy would be similar to the validation accuracy. So the test accuracy is showing at the end 76%, which is good. So we could train the query data set by 76% accuracy and we can see the model. So we have four different GAT convolutional layer. And at first we have just a linear layer. We have the feature uh, drop out, the attention drop out, and Likirulu, and that is repeated. So, but what is inside the GAT convolution? For understanding that, we need some uh, knowledge and concept of DGL because there are some function here like U add V, the U uh, multiplied by E. So, I don't want to go through the uh, deeper level of understanding DGL that needs a complete tutorial, um, you can comment in this video if you need that tutorial, I can prepare that. But if you see the documentation, documentation is uh, really good. So for example, if you see digital function, you will see that uh, those function that multiplying source node feature with edge weight and aggregate them in, in destination node. So just by applying U mu E, it can calculate and propagate all of the message and information through the graph. So you can see that here, that uh, after we calculate the information for each uh, source and destination node, so we just using that to multiply the attention and the features that we had for the source and all of the neighbors. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and understand the graph attention network. That, that is really powerful. Thank you. Have fun.